I'm going to show you how you can release safer and faster with Harness Feature Flags. There's a couple things that Feature Flags allow you to do. It allows you to decouple your deploy and your feature release. This means that when you release new features, you don't have to potentially roll back multiple features in the case of a bad release. They also allow you to test different types of behaviors and be able to see what happens with different users as you roll out a feature. And ultimately, we put guardrails around the entire process to make sure it's safe and predictable. But let's start with something very simple here. I'll show you what a feature flag is and what it does. You'll see in my application here, I have already set something up where I've wired up a feature flag. And I'll show you a change that I'll be able to make without having to do a new release of my software. So if I go ahead and hit the enable dark mode flag, my live application will immediately update without me having to do a new release or restart my application. This means if something goes wrong here, I can also immediately roll that change back. You can get better incident resolution if you're able to just simply turn a feature off as opposed to do a complicated rollback or a long procedure to figure out root cause. Meanwhile, your users are having a bad experience. That's just the first example though. Being able to control the timing of a release for a feature means you aren't having to depend on the deploy time in order to release your new feature. Your product manager, marketing manager, or the appropriate person is in control of when they release, not the devs who aren't customer facing. But that's a very simple example with dark mode. Let's take a more practical example. You'll see here, I have my banking application. I want to allow users to be able to send money as well. However, I don't want to just release this feature to everybody. So we're gonna do a careful controlled release. So first thing we'll do is we will enable this feature flag. We've already deployed the code with the feature in it. Now the SDKs include JavaScript, Java, Golang, Python, and many more. So you can wire up features in many different languages. Now looking at the application, nothing has changed. And there's a reason why. I didn't just blindly roll out this feature. We did something a lot smarter. Let me show you. When we click into the feature flag here, you'll notice it's still serving false even when it's enabled. This is deliberate. I don't want everyone to get the feature by default. I am doing targeting, however. You'll notice here specific users, Demo, Delphia, and Luis are getting the true behavior. I'm logged in as test user, so I'm gonna go ahead and allow my user to see the behavior change as well. Now when I save, and switch back, you'll see the send payment button appears immediately. This allows for several different things. For one, as a developer, I could potentially test my change in production. I could potentially turn it on for internal users only, let us dog food before we release it to the broader public. What's more, I could release this to a specific customer who has requested the feature, or I could release it to a customer cohort that has opted into new beta features. When I come back here, you'll see the different options I have. I can use specific targets, and these are arbitrarily defined by you. These could be individuals, these could be organizations, or it could be personas, entirely up to how you want to use this. Now, I can also release to what are called target groups. So this could be any set of users that I want to define. So this could be beta customers, this could be employees, and I'm allowed to define this any way I want. So I could have this rolled out to one specific group and let them see the new changes before anyone else does. Let's dig in to what this targets actually look like. So we'll take an example here from the targets page. We'll just take the first one here, test user. You'll notice I have an identifier and name. I also have arbitrary attributes I can pass back, in this case, a username perhaps and I can target this individual user from the screen with different behaviors. Now, what's more valuable though is the ability to do target groups. So if I switch back here, I go to target groups and we'll pull up beta as an example. 
I can explicitly include people, exclude people, but I can also do attribute-based targeting. So I could say based on geography, or based on opting into a beta program, or early adopters, or whatever I like. But I can create these based on rules, as well as explicit include-exclude. So, nobody wants to do all these click ops. This is where pipelines come in. When we tie all this stuff together, there's a lot of things that have to happen. You have to do rollouts, you have to document things in JIRA, you have to do percentage-based, you have to do targeting. This all can be very complicated. Pipelines helps you track this process out in a predictable way. So you'll see here, I have my release tracking stage where I'm integrating with JIRA. I'm doing a beta rollout where I'm sending this to just my early adopter customers. I have an approval where I can potentially block this or delay it depending on the feedback I get from beta. I can do a production rollout where I do incremental 10%, 70, etc. with approvals integrated. And this allows for this whole process to happen smoothly without having to have someone clicking the entire time. What's more, I can finally sign off on that and I can even roll back automatically in the cases I make decisions that it's time to decline that particular change. These are types of things you can map out within Harness Pipelines to make it very predictable how these releases look. Moving back to flags, we do break it down by environment, which allows you to control the RBAC and make sure that the right people can release in the right environment. You may not want to have everyone with access to prod or the immediate production pre-production environments. On top of RBAC, we also provide the ability to define policy as code. Harness has an integration with Open Policy Agent that allows you to warn, block, or just document that folks took certain actions. You'll see here the different policy outcomes over time within the platform. You can arbitrarily define different rules based on your use case. This could be things like hygiene related, such as naming conventions. This could be verifying that something is released in one environment before another. This could be requiring different users sign off on things. It really gets all those different use cases where RBAC just doesn't get the job done. To give you an example here, I'm defining a policy where I'm requiring it on to be on in stage before it goes on in production. This makes sure that I'm very safe in my process and very predictable. Finally, all changes within Harness are audited and trackable. And of course, this is all API based. So if you need to do this based on your various scripts and other ways you want to change the functionality, you can do that too. You'll see here the activity log. Over time, you can see who changed what and even potentially see a differential of what the actual change was. Under the hood, it's all defined as YAML using config as code. This allows you to build to define things in Git as well as define them in the UI. So that's your general overview of Harness Feature Flags. This allows you to do a lot of things like safe releases, testing, be very in control of your processes, and make sure that it's very predictable every single time you release a new feature.